If you need information about disputing a copyright claim on YouTube or using Envato Elements music licenses for your YouTube channel, this video is for you. Before we begin, please note that this is not a sponsored video. Recently, I realized that although I had been subscribed to Envato Elements for some time, I had never used their music and had no experience with their music licenses. Additionally, I had never disputed any copyright claims on YouTube. As a result, I decided to test the process by creating a one-hour piano music video for studying, relaxing, and concentration. To create the video, I used Create Studio Doodle Animation and an Envato Elements music track. I've included links to the music video and a video description of how I created it in the description below. If you're interested, please check it out. Now let's move on to today's topic. Welcome to the Digital Appraisal YouTube channel. Join me as I test out different softwares, delivering brutally honest reviews on how their potential for boosting my online earnings, video editing skills, and business management prowess. Let's dive in. Let's begin by reviewing the table of contents for this video. We will cover three main topics. One, how to dispute a copyright claim on YouTube. Two, how to use music licenses from Envato Elements to dispute a copyright claim on YouTube. 3. The results and takeaways from my experience that will help you smoothly dispute a copyright claim on YouTube using the Envato Elements licenses. Next, let's discuss how to dispute a copyright claim on YouTube based on my personal experience. First, let's access the published video list on my YouTube channel account. Left-click on the profile icon in the upper right corner. Then, click on YouTube Studio in the pop-up that appears. Once you are in the studio, click on Content in the left sidebar. As expected, I received a copyright claim soon after uploading my one-hour piano music video to YouTube. Here I am on the list of my published videos. The top video on my list of recently published videos displays a status of copyright in the restrictions column, whereas the others show none. It's important to note that at the time I uploaded this video, my YouTube channel was not yet monetized. If your channel is monetized, the same restrictions column will appear, but there will also be a monetization column displaying a red dollar sign and the message, the video can't be monetized. However, the steps to dispute the claim are the same regardless of whether or not your channel is monetized. Now let me show you how I disputed the claim. Hover over the copyright claim. When a See Details option appears, click on it to open a pop-up box. The pop-up box indicates that my channel is not affected and the video is still public. There is no copyright strike. However, upon scrolling down a bit, I noticed a list of 10 music soundtracks that were identified in the video under the section Content Identified in the Video. The timestamp where YouTube detected copyrighted content is also specified. Although the Impact on the Video column shows a No Impact status, hovering over the status will reveal a message stating that if I become a member of the YouTube Partner Program, this claim may affect my ability to monetize the video. This is not ideal as anyone serious about making YouTube videos would want to monetize them someday. Therefore, I need to dispute the copyright claim. To do so, left-click on the vertical three dots icon located on the right-hand side of the claimed content. A pop-up will appear, offering three options to remove the claimed content. Trim out the segment, replace the song, or mute the song. If you have the rights to the content, click Dispute. In this case, I will click on Dispute. Next, a pop-up will appear stating that the following are not valid reasons for disputing a content ID claim. I own a copy of this song, I am not making money from my video, and I gave credit to a copyright owner. Since none of these reasons apply to me, I will check the box stating that my dispute isn't based on any of the reasons above. I would still like to dispute this content ID claim, and then click Continue. In the Reason section, I will check the License box to indicate that I have permission or a license to use the content claimed in my video, and then click Continue again. In the Requirements section, scroll down and check the box confirming that you have permission to use the content from the copyright owner, and then click Continue again. Moving on to the Rationale section, 
The first thing you'll notice is a box that allows you to provide proof of your YouTube license in 2,000 words. After filling in that box, the remaining steps are simple. You just need to check the boxes to confirm that your video does not infringe anyone's copyright. You understand that the claimant will be able to review your video and your dispute rationale. You also understand that filing fraudulent disputes may result in termination of your YouTube account. This last checkbox may sound a bit scary, but we have no choice but to check it. Finally, you just need to enter your full legal name as a signature. That concludes this section of how to dispute a copyright claim on YouTube. The next question is, what should you enter in the mentioned box to prove that you have a valid license for the music soundtrack used on YouTube? As stated earlier, all the music soundtracks used in this video are from Envato Elements. Therefore, in the second part of this video, we will demonstrate how to use an Envato Elements license to dispute a copyright claim on YouTube. Let's visit Envato Elements to learn more. One of the benefits of using content from Envato Elements is that you receive a license for each piece of content you download, whether it's a stock photo, royalty-free music, or a stock video. This license allows you to use the content legally. Another benefit of it is that you do not need to store it offline if you are still having your subscription. The license is generated at the time you download the piece of content and recorded on My Download part in your account. Here I am in my Envato account. To access my downloads, I will go to my profile and click on the My Downloads tab. On the left-hand side of the screen, I can use the filter to sort and find the specific download I need. When you download digital assets from Envato Elements, especially music or sound effects, you will be prompted to select the project to which the digital asset belongs. To simplify sorting, I selected the Digital Appraisal YouTube Channel project when downloading soundtracks for this channel. By doing so, I indicated that the downloaded assets belong to this project in advance. As you can see, I included my YouTube channel ID in the name of the project in parentheses. Although my research suggests that this is not necessary, I did it to potentially simplify any disputes over my license. However, this is a personal preference, and you do not have to follow it. Let's return to our process. To find licenses, go to the right-hand side of the page and locate the column labeled Date Licensed. Next to the license issue date of any soundtrack you download with your Envato account, you will see a Download License button. Click this button to automatically download your license to your computer. You can also re-download the soundtrack by clicking the pink Download button. Additionally, you can add more licenses for your new project by clicking Add a License and typing your project name. It's worth noting that even after your subscription ends, you will still have the ongoing right to use that license. That's pretty cool, huh? Next, find the downloaded .txt file in your local download folder. It contains all the necessary information, including the item title, item URL, item ID, author username, licensee, registered project name, license date, and item license code. Copy all the information from this file and paste it into the 2,000-word box required in the Rationale section on YouTube. This will serve as proof of your license for the music soundtrack. Afterward, complete the remaining steps, including checking a box to confirm your statement and providing your signature. And that's it for this step. After submitting a dispute on YouTube, you will receive an email confirming that your dispute was successfully sent. Please note that while my email is in Vietnamese, your confirmation email may be in a different language. However, the process should be similar. You will need to repeat these steps for every soundtrack that has a copyright claim on your video. Similarly, you will receive an equivalent number of confirmed emails in your inbox. In my case, I received 10 emails. Another way to check your dispute status is to return to the list of identified copyrighted content in your video. You will see the status Dispute Under Review and the number of days left until the dispute expires. Any successfully disputed copyright claims will automatically disappear from the list. Now we just need to wait for the result. Let's move on to part three, where I'll share my experience and takeaways on how to dispute a copyright claim on YouTube and obtain an Envato Elements license more smoothly. Three days later, after all my disputes have been submitted, I am back on the list of my published videos. 
The top video on my recently published list changed from copyright to non in the restrictions column, meaning my video's dispute was successful. Here are some thoughts and takeaways from my experience. I created a one-hour piano music video using 25 different soundtracks. However, YouTube only required verification for 10 of them. Resolving disputes for these 10 soundtracks was a quick process. Eight of the soundtracks were from artists registered with Adrev for rights holders, and they responded to all my disputes within one hour. However, disputing the remaining two soundtracks took three days. It appears that the time required to successfully dispute a copyright claim on YouTube varies depending on your soundtrack licensing agency or artists. Nonetheless, in my opinion, three days was a reasonable amount of time. Overall, I am feeling very positive about the process of disputing a copyright claim on YouTube using Envato Elements. It is very easy to do, and it is also very convenient since I can just go to my Envato Elements account to download licenses when needed without storing any licenses myself. However, one thing I disliked throughout the process was that some soundtrack names on Envato Elements differed from those that appeared in the automated YouTube soundtrack copyright claim. This made it difficult to match them with their own licenses. This happened with three of my soundtracks. For example, the music soundtrack that was copyrighted by YouTube was called Waterfalls, but this soundtrack name did not appear on my downloaded list at all. Similarly, it did not appear on Envato Elements as Waterfalls. After a while, I realized that the Waterfalls soundtrack belonged to the Thoughtful and Beautiful Piano soundtrack on Envato Elements. You can only find the name Waterfalls after downloading, going to the download folder, and then to the MP3 file. If the Envato Elements team sees this video, please make sure to match the names of the soundtracks on your library to YouTube's soundtrack copyright list. In my case, I only had 10 soundtracks to work on, so it was findable, but imagine someone working with 100. That would be a real disaster. Meanwhile, for anyone watching this video, you can avoid this problem by timestamping the soundtrack while creating your video and linking it with the Envato Elements soundtrack. I did not timestamp and link the soundtracks that I used in advance. The only helpful action I took was creating an alternate black and white background between soundtracks. This way, it was faster to identify where each soundtrack ended and began. However, it would require a significant amount of time if you were working with a large amount of soundtracks. Therefore, please keep my example in mind and always have advanced timestamp tracking. That's all for this video. If you found it useful, please give it a like. If you would like to see more videos like this, let me know by leaving a comment below. To see more of my videos, please subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned and see you next time.